Howdy heck and hello H2O's, Roller Bros, and Nor the Derps alike. I'm your guide Q. Welcome back to some dating hell, and we've got some nuts stories for you here today, so brace yourselves. Also, I've got a gaming channel now that I'll tell you more about at the end of the video, but if you're interested in it, the link will be in the description and the comments down below. But for now, let's get into the stories. So, this was at least 15 years ago before I met my wife. I met a young woman in a chat room, Yahoo, I believe, told you it was a while ago. And she seemed cool and pretty cute, brunette, glasses, all the things I tend to like in women. She was a few years younger than me, I was in my late 20s, and I know for a fact that she was 23. I knew she lived on the other side of my city, I'm a west sider, she's an east sider, sort of. This was prior to Google Maps on the phone, so all I had was her directions on how to get to her house. And and she was a little sparse on how long of a drive it would be once I got to the other side of the city, which was already a 30 minute drive from my house, it ended up being an additional 45 minutes. So I got there to pick her up and she wasn't ready yet, so he's arriving 45 minutes later than he intended to and she's still not ready. So I spent the time talking to her dad, who showed me his workshop and was just a really cool guy. Why is it when you really like the parents that you don't get along with the person you're dating? She had to go to work later, so the plan was for us to get some food, kinda hang out, and then I was going to drop her off at work. Okay, cool. She then proceeded to list off the circumstances surrounding every single guy she'd ever slept with. At one point saying, I'm only 23, but I've slept with more men than years I've been alive. Now, I'm no prude, and I don't really care how many people you've slept with before me, but I really don't want to know the number, and I really don't want to know the the details, like the age of the men oldest was 65, or his pee pee size. She then wanted to eat at Taco Bell, so I went through the drive through paid for our meal, and dropped her off at work an hour before her shift was to start. She wasn't the worst by far, but I wanted to start off easy, and then get into the more interesting stories as time goes by, so I'll have to check in with this person and see what's worse than this. So I'm trying to imagine what her logic was, I don't know if maybe she wasn't interested and she was trying to scare him away, or if she just wanted to seem DTF, but I feel like there are a lot other ways that you can communicate somebody that you're down to have some casual interactions aside from explaining in detail all of the people you've slept with. That's just a little bit weird and oversherry, and I'm pretty sure, unless that's like someone's thing to know about every person you've been with, they're not gonna be into it. This one is a roller coaster. It's absolutely insane. So I was seeing this girl for nearly five months. She seemed sweet and with just a load of bad luck. When we started dating, it was calm and sweet. About three months in, she started constantly texting me, saying that I was ignoring and cheating on her. Something she really pushed the line on was her lying that one of her friends died of cancer. She acted sad and after two days she completely forgot about it. I only found out it was a lie after I left her. I talked to her brothers and they said no one she knew died of cancer. It started going downhill, more accusations of cheating, saying that I was probably cheating on her with a guy, I'm a girl and very much a lesbian, that we both knew, this guy was like a brother to me and I told him everything. I started to think that I needed to leave her, but whenever I tried to even talk to her about anything close to it, she'd say that if I left, she'd end her own life and go back to cutting. I stayed with her for one more month, I was sick of her at that point, and she was acting really shady around all of our friends and she constantly complained that I wasn't being a good girlfriend. About three days before our five months of being together, I broke up with her. She lost it, accusing me of cheating even more, yelling at me, trying to hit me, and threatening me. I was shocked that she could be like this. I left and went to some other friends so that I could take all that she had done in. During these three days that would have led up to our five month, she'd text me demanding her stuff back, easy enough, so I did, I no longer wanted them. I had given her some stuff as well, including a necklace I really wanted back, I asked her for it back, and she said that it was hers and that I was a horrible person for trying to get it back. I wanted it back because it was important to me. I found it a bit unfair, but I got over it. Around the second day, one of my friends confronted me with something they had found out. The whole time she was dating me, she was with another guy, a gay guy mind you, she had actually been dressing up as a guy, posting photos and making this poor guy think she was actually male. I was enraged, and it took me a while to calm down. From what I know, she's still catfishing that guy, I saw some messages on it, but I don't have the pictures, they're on my friend's phone, so that's a bit annoying. 
Yesterday she got with another guy, my best friend. Now, he's a great guy, but like me and the guy she dated before me, all she's going to do is manipulate him and guilt him into staying with her. I want what's best for him, but she's honestly not a great girl to be with after a good amount of time. All of this is still ongoing, so I'm not entirely sure what will happen. But yeah, she cheated with an online guy and is catfishing him and is now with my best friend four days after we broke up. All of this happened really fast, and I'm sure shocked that she could even do this kind of stuff. My best friend doesn't know about the cheating and I won't tell him because it'll break his heart. All that, my friends, is the story of my ex-girlfriend. Oh yeah, there's a lot going on here, so let's just take it one by one. First off, it is not okay to threaten to do something to yourself if somebody leaves you. You can't hold someone hostage in a relationship like that. That is not okay. I definitely commend this person for trying to stay with the person that threatened to end their own life, to try and help them out or whatever, just try and see if things will get better or try not to dump them when they're at their lowest point, but to put them in that situation is completely unacceptable. Like, I definitely want to decrease mental health stigma. If you're not okay, that is okay. You should try and get help in any way you can, whether that be a hotline or actual uh, talk therapy or whatever. But to manipulate somebody like that is unacceptable, and it actually increases the stigma. Secondly, I know you just got out of this brutal relationship, and you probably have a lot going on, but you need to warn your best friend and tell him about the cheating thing, because he does not want to get involved with this girl whatsoever. You just went through this whole experience experience and I mean it's also weird that he's just like I'm going to date this person that my friend had a bad experience with four days after they stopped dating like that in and of itself is weird but I feel like if you care about your friend you should let him know so that he doesn't end up getting his heart broken when she threatens to end her own life like she did with you and that's not to say that as messed up as this girl is she doesn't have the ability to change it's just not going to happen in four days it's going to take time and effort and your best friend just does not want to be involved in that all right taking it down a few few notches, this is more of a normal story. Met a girl at an online dating site after messaging, we swap numbers and have chat on the phone. It was a fun conversation and we arranged to go on a date. Turn up on the night and she's sat at the bar on her phone as I arrive. She's not quite as attractive as I'd imagined and I particularly didn't like her lips. You could see that she had had some work done. She had big boobs but they were clearly fake which isn't really my thing. She clearly thought that she was something special. During the date, she keeps getting phone calls, and it sounds like she's arranging some kind of night out with people that night. It was rude that she kept speaking on her phone, and we hardly got to chat. So we've had one drink and spoken for less than 15 minutes, with a lot of it interrupted. Then she says she's trying to matchmake one of her male colleagues with another girl. Then she asks if there are any bars near where I live, and that we could relocate there. I suggest a bar which she looks up and says that it looks good. Then she says that she'd Ubered to the bar where we were, and would get a ride with the guy she was trying to set up with someone, as she would rather ride with him than me as we'd only just met. Fair enough. Then she says the guy is on his way and will pick her up. So we get up, leave the bar, and relocate to this new place. The guy arrives and picks her up, I say a quick hello to him, I get to the bar and text her to say I'd arrived. There was no reply, that was it, I never heard from her after that. Obviously it must have been her plan to bail out on a date that she didn't want to be on, but the strange thing is that we had hardly spoken, and it's not like I don't look like my pictures. All of my pictures are very recent. I'm a bit confused about why you'd arrange a date with someone and bail out almost immediately. Maybe it's some kind of power thing where she wants to feel like people are chasing around after her. It sounds like she had some kind of night out planned and I was just incidental to her evening plans. Oh well, looks like I dodged a bullet there and I'm just a little annoyed that I wasted my time when I could have been doing something else. Yeah, that was definitely super rude on her part. I don't know what was going through her head that she just decided. It sounds like she decided very quickly that she was not interested and wanted to bail out. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure the second she started making plans with her friends, she was just trying to get out of the situation. And it stinks that she was rude to you, but it sounds like it worked out for the best because you weren't really interested in her appearance-wise, and obviously her rudeness just made you less and less interested. So I think it kind of worked out here. 
So I do desperately need your help, yes, you, in naming my gaming channel. It's currently called Q Epic Gaming Adventure. I've thought about calling it GameCube, like Q with a B at the end and kind of like the Nintendo console. But uh, yeah, let me know if you have any suggestions because I'm trying to come up with a nice catchy name that's also easy for people to search and stuff like that. Uh, currently, I'm going to be playing some Black Ops 3 Zombies. There's a lot of cool custom maps in the workshop that I'm wanting to check out and also just trying to get better at that game i kind of want to show my progression as a zombies player but let me know if you have any suggestions for games for me to play and if you check out that one video i've only got one video up on the channel but i'm intending to upload a lot more in addition to stuff on this channel obviously so let me know if you have any games you'd want like me to play or if you have any tips for my let's play style if you want it to be kind of free of edits or if you want me to do more heavy editing with it um also if you'd like to see gaming live streams and stuff like that let me know any of that stuff. Anyway, skate on the best of your abilities, guys. Make sure you're drinking more water, and I hope to see you very soon. Have an absolutely wonderful day, and please stay safe out there.